Hey guys, it's time for another pen review. Today I'm going to show you the Sailor Compass. I've never been a big fan of Japanese pens in general. That's just me. It's just not my taste quite so much, but I've made myself pick up a few more here or there. I've had a Sailor before, my son's got a Sailor before, and to me they were okay. Um, I've been able to borrow some Sailors and write with them as well, uh, like a King of Pens, and I kind of liked it. Um, I'm think, still thinking about buying like a, a Sailor uh, 1911 large, uh, but I saw this one on sale, generally about $50 retail, on sale for $30, and I went ahead and got it along with uh, some other pens. And I figured I'd just go ahead and give it a shot. What I wasn't certain though is that it came with a converter, which it does. And I'm glad to see because, you know, Sailor taking its proprietary cartridge and converter made my day to see this package that contained a Sailor converter. Because quite honestly, if you're going to sell a pen, you ought to sell a converter along with it. I understand that they don't uh, often do that with different brands and I understand why. But, for crying out loud, there is a Standard International out there for a reason, and I realize why people go ahead and, or businesses, will keep their proprietary cartridge or converter, but to not include them is just, to me, unacceptable. But, went ahead and got this. So, the Sailor Compass. It does have a steel nib. It is a 1911, so it's a low model of the 1911 within that family and this is a blue transparency and uh, has silver trim on it it's a medium fine nib uh, there were a whole bunch of different colors that were available to me I'll put some of those up here so you can see the whole family of the Sailor Compass line uh, but um, this is one that I thought I would like above all others just because I kinda like the color blue and I didn't really want another purple pen and I didn't really want pink and I be honest with you, I didn't want a clear pen, which is a little odd for me. So let's go ahead and take it out of the package. It just has this plastic sleeve. And the pen is encased in plastic. And uh, it actually, if you, you're familiar with 1911s, and this should look very familiar to you, but it's in a sealed package. So you can tell I haven't even taken, taken it out to play with it just yet. So they seal that package, unlike a lot of others that just use cellophane. So reach over here, grab my handy dandy Stanley scissors that sit upon my desk every day, and let's open up that package. So here you've got a really nice translucent blue. Um, I did like the color. Just from the pictures that I saw online, I did like it. So let's go ahead and show you what some of those other pens uh, that are similar to it might look like. So you look here, you got a Jinhao 992, which is Kind of, I'll be honest with you, it seems to be a Chinese ripoff of a lot of what the, some of the Sailor pens seem to be. And then you've got a Monteverde Monza, which is, in my opinion, nothing but a Jinhao 992. A Sailor Prophet, which is another name or another branding of the, the uh, 1911 uh, that they uh, sell in, I, my understanding is in, in Japan or some other areas, they actually sell the Prophet which is the exact same thing as a 1911. This is a Sailor 1911. This one belongs to my son, Matthew, and I wanted to bring it out just for comparison. And here you've got the Sailor Compass, the 1911 Compass in the series. So I figured I'd show you what those look like side by side. So let's go ahead and pull this out. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. You pull it off here, and it is a twist to open. You can see the, the screws that are here uh, in that cap, which will meet up with these screws right here, these threads right here, in order to close and you get your twist cap. Uh, here you've got a, a, a nice little pointed finial dome here, uh, and uh, you can see you got a little bit of uh, little bit of break there where you've got a clip that sits down inside that plastic. It's actually encased in the plastic. Uh, and then you've got that metal clip. You can always kind of tell a sailor clip by the way it kind of flanges out a little bit as you go up towards that finial. It always uh, kind of tapers down in and it's got the, the, the typical very nice, it's a kind of, it's not very stylish, it's very functional is what it is. And then you have down here uh, you've got a cap band, and let me 
to see if I can get you a really good look at that cat band and what it says on it. So essentially it says right here, made in Japan, sailor, made in Japan, sailor. <laughs> so uh, that's all it says there on that cat band. Let's untwist it and I'll show you a really good close up of what that sailor nib looks like. It is a medium fine nib, which is the same kind of nib that I've got on my sailor profit. Uh, over here and quite honestly it wasn't my favorite nib in the world but um, it was okay and then you've got a nice clear feed here so rather than having a black feed uh, you have a very clear plastic feed there and of course it is a cartridge converter system so you open that up in here that's where you would seat your converter now before uh, before I can completely tear apart this package, uh, they do have instructions on this converter on the back. I already started to pull it open and I was like, you know, maybe I ought to actually show this to people before I go ahead and tear it apart. So you get your instructions uh, in Japanese, directions for use, and it even has some uh, in English as well. But um, anyway, like I said, I started to tear this apart. I said, you know, I ought to turn the camera back on uh, so I can actually show all of this. So I'm gonna tear the package open, get out the converter. They don't want anybody to walk away with these things, I can tell you that, because they've got these nicely and tightly packed. One of the things you're gonna find about um, the Sailor converters, it's a lot like the converters that you're gonna find for Pilot, uh, where you got a great big open mouth hole there. Uh, this is not a very expensive converter, but at least they did include one. It's a fairly you know, cheap plastic, but you do have your piston that doth operate thusly fits in very nice and tight as it should and we will be drying up some ink here momentarily the other thing you do have two sailor cartridges that are included should you like them and here you've got here in the bottom of the box you do have some instructions if you're into that kind of thing you do have a uh, an instruction booklet me, I don't often read them unless it's you know totally foreign to me as to the operation of it. Uh, fountain pens in general for me, no, they're not. So, all right, so let's go ahead and ink this baby up, um, and I'll give you some. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll also do is I'll give you some statistics on it um, and give you, um, you know, a little more insight as to the pen itself, and uh, and then I'll go ahead and do a writing sample with it. One of the things, uh, you know, it. Being 1911, it's there to me. They're always on the small side, which is why when I go to buy a 1911, I want the 1911 large. I don't necessarily want the uh, you know the standard size 1911. And just here, you saw the size comparisons next to the 1911 standards in the, in the 1911 Profit. Uh, then you know I kind of like them a little on the big side, and this is a little on the small side for me. But I figured for thirty dollars, I mean, let's go ahead and give it a shot. All right. So let's go ahead and give you some statistics on this particular pen. Then we'll come back um, and I'll give you a demonstration as to how this uh, 1911 compass really is, is what I'm supposed to be calling it, the Sailor Compass and how it writes. So now that you've seen everything you wanted to know statistically <laughs> about the Sailor Compass, uh, let me show you a little bit about the pen since I'm now I'm going to have it in the hand and I'm going to have it ready to write. Uh, for me, for my big mitts, this is actually a little bit on the small side. Um, I did go ahead and ink it up and uh, I did a sample that I've had for a while at Diamine Florida Blue. You go ahead and post this pen. It posts very nicely, very Sturdily, it's not going to come off. I do recommend doing it because, first of all, this is a very lightweight pen. You saw the statistics, so it's uh, not heavy whatsoever. And quite honestly, for me, it's it's doable using it like this. It's just a little too small for my personal taste. I personally like it a little longer than this, a little more meatier in my hand. So personally, um, I am going to write with it this way. This way. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and post that when I go to write with it. 
let's see how this medium fine nib uh, works on this particular pen. So this is the Sailor Compass. Um, it is in the 1911 family. This has a medium fine nib. It is, of course, a steel nib. And as I just told you, I did put in some diamine Florida, uh, the land of my birth, blue. You, know, you can get a little bit of wetness out of it. It's not a tremendously wet nib. It's not really meant to be, especially medium fine. It's a you know it's a little on the fine side, obviously, of medium. And when you're talking about a Japanese nib, it's more like what we would definitely would call an American fine. So it's steel. You're not going to get a lot of ink out of it when you go to use it. There's not really any flex to it. But you can get a little bit of variation in your line here if you go and you do apply some pressure. I mean, you can see that nib get a little bit of tine separation in order to give just a little more ink. But quite honestly... It's not a tremendous amount, but you can get it if you wanted to try. This is not the smoothest nib in the world, but it's definitely not horrendous. It is one that I would definitely consider to be acceptable, and actually uh, on the good side of acceptable. It, it's not one that I probably would even bother uh, taking a nib smoothing kit to. Quite honestly, on a lot of pens that I've had here recently, I've had to do some nib smoothing even on new ones, not just on older ones or used ones, but even on new pens, I, I've often had to, to whip out my nib smoothing kit and go to town on it. But, you know, this is... Uh, it's not bad. It keeps up with whatever I'm doing. You go to the light touch, it's going to actually do fairly well and uh, give you a nice smooth line. So if you have a little heavy hand on it, you're going to feed. You're going to feel that feedback. You're actually going to get a little scratchiness out of it if you're heavy-handed with it. Uh, but if you're very light to the touch, you're going to just glide across that page. So there you go. All right, is it worth thirty dollars? Um, you know, it's it's Sailor, so I'm hoping. You know, uh, I was hoping that with Sailor quality, it would definitely be worth the money. Um, be honest with you too, though, I've actually had some Jinhao 992s that have written every bit as good as this, and ones that didn't. After smoothing out the nib, they wrote just fine, and I've given away a ton of and written with dozens and dozens of Jinhao 992s. Um, I, I like it better than that Monteverde Monza, which to me was just a piece of garbage because um, it was way overpriced. Uh, I was hoping that this would not be just another overpriced, uh, you know, Jinhao 992 sort of pen. It is, you know, it, it quite honestly is better than the 992 in the way that it does handle um, right out of the box. I mean, I didn't have to do anything to it in order to make it acceptable. 30 bucks, though, uh, even at, on sale at 30 I definitely don't think it was worth the thir the 45 maybe, or $50 price tag. I'll put up the graphic again so you can see exactly what the uh, MSRP was and what the sale versus what the sale price was. Um, but, um, you know, it's definitely on the low end, um, and you can tell that in the workmanship materials. Or, or not necessarily in the workmanship, but the materials that are being used. You know, you, you've got a, a nice... Um, uh, good looking acrylic that they're using, this transparent uh, blue resin slash acrylic that they're using. So essentially it's blue, clear, you know, clear blue plastic. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's definitely not, if you're looking for something like, like the $300 Sailor 1911 large that I've been looking at for $312, I'd obviously, uh, if it was this quality, I never would pay for that. Uh, but for 30 bucks, I mean, I don't feel bad about the purchase. I don't feel awesome about the purchase either. Um, but, you know, what I will say is, uh, you know, it, it does have a fairly decent nib for being a steel nib and being a Japanese medium fine. I actually, uh, you know, I think it's fairly comparable to that, uh, the much more expensive... Uh, Sailor Profit 1911 that I've got over here. So there you go. I mean, if you're looking for a 
budget version of a Sailor 1911. Uh, I mean, it's worth giving it a try. If you want to take the chance on the 30 bucks, it, you know, it may be worth your while. I do, like I said, I don't feel bad about the purchase, and I don't feel stellar about it either. I'm kind of ambivalent about it. 